Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I don't know if this is a nice angle or not, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to make my new sketchbook, which will have a different size and shape from usual because I'm try I really want to experiment with an hexagonal sketchbook. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are going to need a cutting mat, then a very big ruler, <laughs> a big sheet of paper. Now this is watercolor paper because that's what I like to use and the, um, yeah, I'm going to start with the hexagon. Let me just go a little bit closer. To draw the hexagon, just grab a sheet of paper, where is mine? It's here. I'm going to be using an A5 one. And this tool that I'm not sure of the name of in English. So yeah, but you probably know what it is. We all use this in school in math class, so yeah. We have to make sure that the shape fits in here, so yeah. This is... I think this is a nice diameter. No, I have some more space, so I'm going to make it larger. Then, if you don't know how to make a hexagon, you basically do this. Okay, I'm going to try and make it darker. So you can see the circle. Then grab a pencil and the ruler. And as you can see, the center is in here. And you just mark the diameter. Then don't close your tool <laughs> that I don't know the name of. Because you are going to put the dry point here, go open it all the way to the, to the center, so if you didn't close it, you don't need to do much. And then just do this, and then the same thing on the other side. And now you have your circle divided equally into six. When you connect the dots, you get a hexagon. Super simple and very useful to know, especially if you have geometry class. This shows up a lot in the tests and exams, so yeah. I'm just going to connect the dots so that you can see better because yeah you don't really need to connect the dots to to transfer this to the watercolor sheet of paper and there so then let me see if you can see this on the other side no you can't so i'm going to cut this sheet of paper and trace it onto the watercolor paper because I don't really want to use tracing paper. Don't feel like it. Now you don't need to be to be very precise in this step because I'm not going to unless you are cutting with an exacto knife. But since I am going to tear the paper with the ruler instead of using an exacto knife or a cutting knife, whatever you want to call it. Because of that, the edges are not going to be very tidy. And because of that, I don't really think it would be necessary. <laughs> okay. 
put that aside. Um, I'm going to take that, those five centimeters off and just have to mark it just so that when, if I decide to use this sketchbook for my next project at school, if I decide to do that, this will make my life five centimeters easier. <laughs> so, okay. I think I can take this away. I'm not sure if it will help enough or not. So, I'm going to cut it. What I usually do is just place the ruler, make sure you have a metal ruler with these sharp edges. Now you have to be careful with them because you may cut yourself. But they are great for cutting paper because they leave these jagged edges that I really like that make it look like the deckled edges of the really nice watercolor paper. Now what I'm going to do is trace this hexagon in a repeated part pattern way. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Now, don't worry about the, the scraps that are going to be left over all around this shape because those scraps, at least I usually use them to swatch colors and to, in general, to test the supplies that I'm going to be using or just, you know, just use them. <laughs> as smaller just as smaller how do i say this <laughs> smaller pieces of paper just for small paintings that's what i wanted to say i should have measured this a little bit better but I think this bottom part will be very nice for a, a second sketchbook. Okay, so now that we have all the hexagons marked, I need to figure out what is the best way to connect them all because I need to make sure that some of the hexagons are connected. For instance, these two, I'm going to have trouble because I made a mistake somewhere and so these are not very well drawn <laughs> so what I think I'm going to do is start on this one and make it connect here then make them these two connect there then connect here then maybe I can connect it here and then here and then this one, 
then it would go there and there there and there and this one would be here and this would be here yeah i think that's it this would be there then here oh wait 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 i made three connect i made two connections in the same you can only have a maximum of two connections to one hexagon if you have three then it won't work so i need to find an eraser so i won't because it should be like that then this one i think i'm going to make it connect here yes i'm going to make it connect here and then it will go up no it will go this way and then we can go this way then we can go there 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 and there okay that's that's what i'm going to do i need to find an eraser and then i'm going to start cutting i'm going to start on this side what we have to do is going to start by this what you want to do is always start by the fat side because you go by the thin side it will rip then the connection is there so that means you can cut here so i'm going to do this and then this is the side of the connection so this one you can't cut if you cut this your page will not connect obviously i'm going to speed up this part also because it it will take a long time <laughs> No. Oh, I really like this. <laughs> Sorry, I really like how this 
type of sketchbooks work. Now the thing you might have noticed is that it doesn't stay put, it just keeps moving. So what I'm going to do is press it with a few very heavy books. So yeah, let's start with geometry. <laughs> geometry book and then we can add whatever now i'm going to leave this pile maybe i should do this the other way around like this and this and if you want you can make a cover for the sketchbook in the same way that I showed you in my other accordion sketchbook video that I'm going to link in the card up here <laughs> um, and yeah I'm going to clean up my desk and I will come back to show you how the sketchbook looks like after being pressed for a few hours I'm going to leave this with a few more books on top because I don't think this is heavy enough. <laughs> so yeah, just going to add the other books and I will come back tomorrow. Hello, and I am back. Please excuse my rust, rust, yes, rough voice and pyjama <laughs> um, things. But I just woke up and I really want to see this is now. Now, I left this overnight, but I also did use um, these plastic things um, to... you just need a smooth, um, soft edge to press down the, the folds a little bit better, because I thought it was not... Uh, well pressed enough um, and went over every single fold. Um, I forgot to record that part but it is pretty simple and I can show you just in a second. Just these away and as you can see this is a little bit more manageable <laughs> right now. It still unfolds but it is a little bit better. Now, what I did with the bone folder, it is actually plastic, but they used to be bo uh, bone, hence the name. So, you take a fold, lay it flat on the table, and then just go over it with this and press it. You can also use the back of a scissors or something like that, and it is pretty simple. Now, um... Yeah, I just need a cover and I don't think I'm going to add a cover before I finish it because I like to be able to be rough with it and in the end I will decide after I finished it if I need a cover or not. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video, hopefully next week too. <laughs> so. Yeah, see you later.